right guys today i'm coming at you with a video that i never thought i'd be making we have a trash can 2013 mac pro and if we go up to the apple and we click about this mac as you'll see we're on mac os monterey 12.7.4 obviously monterey was the last officially supported mac os version for the trash can mac pro but as you see our processor is the 3 gigahertz 8 core intel xeon e5 we've got 64 gigabytes of 1866 megahertz ddr3 memory we've got a samsung 980 pro ssd in there and we've got two amd fire pro d700s in there six gigabytes each for a total of 12 gigabytes vram pretty cool system if i do say so myself um this is actually the first intel mac i've ever owned believe it or not i started out with a m1 macbook air then i went from the m1 macbook air to the m1 pro 16 inch macbook pro then i jumped from the m1 pro 16 inch to the m3 max 16 inch but anyway the point of today's video is we're going to use the open core legacy patcher to upgrade this from its last supported version mac os monterey to the current mac os well not for very long but as of right now the current mac os which is mac os 15 sequoia so we are first going to want to download open core so just open Safari and search open core. We're going to click the GitHub link. It's going to open in a new tab and we're going to go to releases. And as of right now, the latest version is 2.4.1. We're going to click that and we are going to download the open core patcher dot pkg in my case i already have open core downloaded and installed so just download it install it and you can move to the next step so if we go here let's open up the open core legacy patcher now as you see open core legacy patcher 2.4.1 model mac pro 6 comma 1 that is the trash can mac pro right there if you're Building an open core patcher for a different Mac than the one you're currently on you can go into settings and We we can change our target model to whatever we want any of these Macs that are supported by open core all the way from MacBook 5 comma 1 to Mac Pro 4 comma 1 Mac Pro 5 comma 1 Mac Pro 6 comma 1 in this case we're going to be doing this for our current mac that we're on so that is a mac pro 6 comma 1 so once you have that selected you can uh hit return now we want to create a mac os installer and we want to download a mac os installer now as you see it gives us options we want the very latest version of mac os running on this unsupported mac pro and let's just make it simple we want Mac OS Sequoia. The current version is 15.6.1 and it is 15.7 gigabytes. Released on August 20th, 2025. So literally like not even three weeks ago. But like I said for this Mac Pro 6 comma 1, the latest supported version is Mac OS Monterey. But we're going to bring it all the way up to current day Mac OS Sequoia. So click the installer for whatever version of Mac OS you want to install and press download. It's now gonna begin downloading the installer to the Mac. Once the installer is done downloading, we'll be back. All right, so here on the Mac Pro, the Sequoia installer is almost done downloading. Less than a minute left, 15.3 gigabytes of 15.7 at 26.3 megabytes per second. All right, so it's asking us if we would like to create macOS installer. Finished extracting the installer. Would you like to continue and create a Mac OS installer? Yes, obviously we do. And here is the Sequoia installer we downloaded, build number 24G90, click on it. And you need to have a USB with at least 16 gigabytes of storage and preferably USB 3. But yeah, so select your USB, whatever USB that may be. Confirmation, are you sure you want to erase Ultra USB 3.0? That's the name of my USB drive. All data will be lost, this cannot be undone. So it's gonna format your USB and copy the macOS installer to it. So if you have anything important on that USB, go ahead and transfer that over to something else before you create the installer. But in this case, this was a macOS Monterey installer before. So 
it's got nothing on it. So we're going to go ahead and format it and install the Sequoia installer on it. And it is going to go ahead and write all the data for the macOS installer to the disk. Creating installer, install macOS Sequoia. Creating macOS installers can take 30 plus minutes on slower USB drives. We will notify you when the installer is ready. So once this is done, we'll be back. Just while we're waiting here, um, if you guys wouldn't mind, please like the video down below if you're enjoying it so far. And as well, please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I just did a short you guys can check out. Um, I basically took the entire trash can Mac Pro apart and uh, it was the most disgusting, dirtiest thing I've ever seen in my life. So I blew it out with an air compressor in my apartment, which was not the smartest idea, but it made for a cool video. And I recorded it in slow-mo at 4K, 120 FPS on my 16 Pro Max. And the best part about that is that is the first time since I've had that 16 Pro Max that I've actually used that 4K at 120. So that tells you everything you need to know. But maybe I'll include a clip of that short here. I don't know. This is hands down the most disgusting trash can Mac Pro I've ever seen. Let's blow it out. <laughs> What do you guys think? This eBay seller is definitely getting some negative feedback from me. Um, but yeah, you guys should go check it out. And I also do have an Amazon storefront. Shameless plug, I know. But yeah, I do have an Amazon storefront. I'm adding a bunch of products to it uh, daily at this point. There is a bunch of stuff on there. If you are a tech head like me, Apple guy, Apple gal, whatever. There is MagSafe accessories on there. There's iPhone accessories. There is... Uh, the stuff I use to record these videos that I'm using right now on there as well. And there's a little bit of something for everybody obsessed with Apple like I am. So if you can, go check out my Amazon storefront. If you purchase something, I will receive a very, very small commission. And I mean very, very small. But every little bit helps creating these videos. Uh, my channel is currently not monetized, uh, so right now, Amazon is my only source of income. So if you guys can go there and check it out and purchase something, it would mean the world. So thank you for your support, and let's get back to the video as the installer is wrapping up here. All right, the installer is finally just about done. Um, let me know down in the comments if you guys want me to make a video about how to connect two Macs to one Thunderbolt display at the same time, because obviously I have my MacBook Pro hooked up to it and my Mac Pro and I also switch it between the Mac Pro to the Mac Mini. But either way, at any given time, I have two of these Macs connected to this display at once. So let me know if you guys want to see a video about that. And I will get it out ASAP. It is now validating the installer integrity. Looks like we're finally wrapping up here. So, successfully created macOS installer. Installer created successfully. Would you like to... Continue and install OpenCore to the disk. Yes, finish building your OpenCore configuration. Would you like to install OpenCore now? Install the disk. Now what do we do here? Do we select the internal SSD or do we select the USB? I'm going to go ahead and select the USB. Okay, so success. OpenCore is finished installing to the disk. You can eject the drive, insert it into the... Mac Pro 6.1 reboot, hold the option key and select open core boot EFI option. Okay, so we're obviously using the Mac that we're going to install this on already, so we don't have to eject it. All we have to do is uh, restart. So let's uh, go ahead and restart. All right, so I plugged in my USB and now this is the EFI boot for the USB. This is the EFI boot for the internal SSD. So we're going to click the EFI boot for the flash drive. And we're going to click or press enter on install macOS Sequoia. All right. We get another Apple with the progress bar. Except this time the progress bars are way down here instead of being like here. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to erase 
my 980 Pro SSD. We're going to keep the name the same and we're going to make sure it's APFS Erase. All right, our Samsung 980 Pro is erased. Now we can quit Disk Utility and we can click Install Mac OS Sequoia and click Continue. Continue again, get a nice beach ball. All right, let's agree to the terms. Agree again. Let's select our Samsung 980 Pro SSD, two terabyte as you can see there. Continue. All right, Mac OS Sequoia will be installed on the Samsung 980 Pro. We'll be back when this is complete. All right, so it seems like it has installed all the files to the disk. Now we just have an Apple logo with a progress bar that says 29 minutes remaining. So we'll be back when that's finished. All right, so the Mac got down to 19 minutes. Then it gave us that progress bar you just saw. Now that progress bar has disappeared. Now maybe we're gonna boot into Sequoia. I don't know. I've been sitting here for about 30 to 45 minutes. Ooh, that's a good sign. We got the Sequoia logo on the SSD. That could be a good sign, I'm assuming. Let's find out. We got another Apple logo with a progress bar with a random white screen. Not sure what that's about. 2013 trash can is so unbelievably slow at installing updates. I don't know if it was like that uh, when it was new back in the day, but it is so incredibly slow at installing updates. It takes hours and hours. Something, you know, you do on an Apple Silicon Mac, it takes, you know, five, ten minutes. This takes at least double to triple the time, maybe even four times the time. Like I said, I've never used an Intel Mac before. My trash can Mac Pro is my first Intel Mac ever. And oh my God, it's miserable. I can definitely see why Apple switched away from Intel and started with their own in-house silicon. Okay, we got another progress bar. This time it says 1% completed. 3% completed, maybe. Hopefully this is it. I don't know. 75% completed. We're, we're going at lightning speed here. 99% completed. We've been at 99% for a little while now. Oh, we got a chime. Please boot up into the Sequoia setup. What's kind of cool about this is it's all automated. Like it uh, picks the right options that it needs to to uh, continue the installation, which is pretty cool. Honestly, I wouldn't need this trash can Mac Pro if Apple would just bring back boot camp for Apple Silicon Macs because the whole reason why I bought this is because I want to play Call of Duty. I want to play it on Plutonium and you can't do that with virtual machines because of the anti-cheat. We've made it to Sequoia. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a moment in history. This is a moment in history for the whole world to see. We've got a 2013 trash can Mac Pro going through the Mac OS Sequoia setup wow setup is going pretty smooth it feels like a, a native experience honestly no real slowdowns just like you were setting up a supported mac we do not want to sign in with our apple id right now set up later skip terms and conditions agree agree again uh enable location services sure no we don't want to share analytics continue no we don't want screen time no we don't want siri we want auto only download automatically welcome to mac continue and here we are let me switch to the screen recording all right and here we are in the screen recording on mac os sequoia on this late 2013 mac pro sequoia 15.6.1 to be exact but let's uh see what open core wanted open core legacy patcher has detected that you're booting open core from a usb or external drive if you'd like to boot your Mac normally without the USB plugged in, you can install OpenCore to the internal drive. Would you like to launch OpenCore Legacy Patcher and install to the disk? Yes, of course we do. Install to disk. Let's make sure we select our internal SSD and select the EFI. OpenCore has finished installing to the disk. You need to reboot and hold the option key and select open core slash boot EFI option. Now according to open core, all we need to do with the USB now out of the system is select the EFI boot. And then, yep, here we go. Here's the Sequoia logo with our Samsung 980 Pro and it should boot into macOS Sequoia without the USB. Then I believe we need to install the root patches after we boot back up. We want the post install root patch. 
All right, according to this, all the post-install root patches are already installed. So looks like we don't have to do anything with that. But as we go into system preferences and about, as you see, there's a late 2013 Mac Pro, three gigahertz, eight core Intel Xeon E5, with the AMD Fire Pro D700, six gigabyte and 64 gigabytes of 1866 megahertz DDR3 running the latest version of macOS Sequoia via Open Core Legacy Patcher, which is version 15.6.1. And it'll be interesting to see if macOS Tahoe gets support as well, because Tahoe is actually supposed to be the last release for Intel Max. So there may be no open core legacy patcher after Tahoe because after Tahoe, every single supported Mac will be an Apple Silicon Mac. So yeah, guys, that was installing macOS Sequoia on the unsupported late 2013 Mac Pro via the open core legacy patcher. It was really cool to be able to finally use an Intel Mac and check out the open core legacy patcher. Uh, we were able to successfully get our Mac updated to the latest version of Mac OS that is not supported for this Mac. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment your thoughts down below. Let's have a conversation and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Also consider checking out my Amazon storefront where you can purchase some cool tech gadgets that I'd recommend to you and you can support the channel without it costing you anything extra. I'll see you guys later.